happening room on the Instagram Live, and it was totally free. So that's the major pro. The major con for me uh, is that you sort of miss. I mean, I think I think anyone who has had a nice FaceTime hang with a friend of theirs knows that yeah, it's nice, but it's not the same. You you miss you miss certain texture. You miss certain quality. Um, and you also miss that sort of uh, uh, the term reciprocity, meaning like I give you something and and I receive in return something that adds to the experience, right? And and that type of reciprocity is harder to to gather on the internet. It is sometimes possible, like the you know, Instagram understands that reciprocity is important. You see the the little like uh, colorful hearts floating up on the screen, and and that's why people right in the chat because they're saying I want you to know that I'm here and that I'm enjoying this or I'm not enjoying this or that your hair looks amazing Adam um, or whatever <laughs> it is right so um so I I mean for me I it's just a, it's a completely different beast and it's one that I I think I'm okay at and I think you're probably better at because you've done a lot of radio you've done a lot of tv um but it but like i i we've we've talked over the years you love performing live right like like it's that it's that magical feeling but it's it's kind of hard to describe right yeah the thing that really stuck out to me from what you just said was this idea of reciprocity um i feel and i don't know if other people feel this way in the music space and the dance space whatever i feel almost obliged to continue putting out a um, lot, whether it's live or not live content during this time, because all of the people that are watching right now um, and who, you know, like the things that I do on Instagram and participate with our music, making videos, whatever, they put a lot of time and effort into helping our band develop into what it is today. I mean, seven years ago, like you said, we were playing for two people, but it's thanks to all of these people that we are where we are now and selling out places like Radio City. So I feel like the reciprocity of a concert, they pay for a ticket and we give them a show. We put out music and they stream it or you know purchase it on iTunes and we get a certain amount of money for that. But I feel like we owe our fans a lot more than we've given them in the artistic space so far mm -hmm. because of how they've helped us to grow and reach more and more people. So in a way, I feel obliged to be doing things like this and live performances because it's, it's a thank you to them for helping us to get to where we are and to be able to share our art with more people. Yeah, and I think the question is, what, what do people want or need right now? Um, and I think it sort of goes back to maybe one of the first things I said, which is that to pretend like, like what we need right now is uh, the same as what we needed a year ago today is, is very different. Um, just because our, our psychology has changed, our, our kind of emotional experience has changed. You know, I didn't realize how badly I needed to see my brother and just say, hey, a year ago. But now I think about that most days, like how nice would it, would, would it be just to see my friends and hang out and do a, do a very normal thing? So I, I mean, I think we can talk a lot about what, what our, our current situation does to the economy or to, or to our, you know, our personal finances or, or you know, like legitimate loss of, of life. <laughs> um, but I think we're also, you know, we're going to have a sort of different psychological response to the world and to ourselves after this. And, and I think maybe we know what that is immediately. And maybe that just takes a bit of time. Uh, I mean, I'm, I think what's, what's amazing is when people know what they want or need and they can, they can articulate that, but that's not always something that people are capable of, of doing. Someone says, or, you know, what do you want for dinner? And I go, I have no idea. Or what do you want to watch on Netflix? I have no idea. Sometimes, sometimes knowing what you what you want from something is uh, is more difficult than it sounds. Yeah, that's a great point. Hmm. Including also, not to not to throw a wrench in, but like 
of course you want to like give it's like it's like buying someone a birthday present right like you know this person you adore this person this person's done, done so much for you you want to do something in return but you can fret for a really long time about what the perfect birthday gift is for them right like you know you want to do something to show you care but what is the right thing is it a heartfelt letter is it like you know a, a crocheted sweater is it absolutely nothing because they're kind of anti-material or whatever i don't know um <laughs> so so for your birthday i'm getting you absolutely nothing because you're don't get me here. anything i'm like <laughs> so marie kondo over here um <laughs> you know i've got lots of stuff i've got at least one shirt we're good we're good Actually, I'm wearing full, like, cartoon bubbles, buttercup, and princess bubblegum from Adventure Time. And if you don't know what that is, we're going to have to talk after this Instagram Live. Okay. <laughs> I know about these, but I don't know about Adventure We're going to talk about Adventure Time later. Okay. Backstage. Right. Backstage. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that. Um, there was something else I was going to say. Um, do you think that art that you're going to make from here on. Oh, actually, I remember what I was going to say. Um, a new artistic renaissance as a result of people being stuck inside and not having as much to do. A lot of people are saying, oh, this time is going to usher in a renaissance because everyone's had time to write their book or write their play or, you know, um, learn to paint or whatever. So there's yeah. going to be an artistic renaissance. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> I think I think the I think the equivalence of our time is everyone's gonna have a podcast, and I think everyone is gonna have a really dope house on Animal Crossing. I think those are our kind of two uh, two things that we're experiencing. No, I mean to be honest, I I think this is just the time for uh, for introspection, for for reflecting on the things that matter to you. And I think for a lot of people, what matters to them is is art. Also, I think a lot of people who say had a guitar sitting in the corner of their room for the past decade, but always kind of had a reason to put it off are now looking at that guitar and that guitar is looking back at them and saying, now's the time. Now's the time to learn to play guitar. And who knows when the next person to learn to play guitar is, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's true. John Mayer or something like that. Hey, I mean... If somebody took the time during these few months and didn't know how to play guitar and came out of it being as good a guitar as John Mayer is, that would be really impressive. That would, be, would, that, that would actually year. be kind of miraculous. Um, he's very yeah. good at guitar. but Yes, he is very good at guitar. How are your piano uh, skills coming along? Oh, great. Great. Good. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, you want me to say more? Really great. <laughs> so great. I'm amazing. <laughs> good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, you'll have to prove it when we're uh, done with quarantine. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Afterwards. Afterwards. Yeah. Um, I do want to hit one more thing before we go. I do yeah. want to talk about um, a little bit about the economics of this time and how it might affect art in the future. We've kind of circled around it a little bit in some of the things that we've said. Yeah. Um, but I think it's something important to recognize that a lot of people will not have the, you know, resources to see live shows the way they did before. Um, and a lot of art will not, a lot of artistic people will not have the resources to be able to take their work on tour or bring it to people because, you know, times are tough financially. Yeah. So at the same time as everyone's saying, oh my God, there's going to be an artistic renaissance. At the same time, I feel like there's going to be a drop off in the, um, in some forms of art because of the economic repercussions of this. Yeah. I mean, yeah, things, things are going to change. They're definitely going to change in my world. I kind of welcome them changing uh, because it's not like our, our world was not perfect. Our world had a lot of issues. Our world had a lot of inequality. Um, uh, our world had, a, a, you know, economic, but also social, political. Um, and I think if we can smartly rebuild and, and create a world that is more just, more accessible, more fair, and more beautiful, more diverse, then, uh, you know, that, that, could be a, that could be a good thing for all of us. This is a really awful thing what we're experiencing. But, but I think the opportunity to, to rebuild or remodel or, or, or change change the way that the world works. Um, I mean, 
I won't get into it, but the world wasn't, wasn't amazing for a lot of people. Um, so if we can make it better for them and make it better for everyone, uh, that, that would be a really beautiful thing. I'm talking very vaguely. Um, most specifically, yeah, I probably won't tour as much, but um, maybe when I do tour, it'll be much more meaningful. Um, or maybe I'll be better when I get out there. I don't know. I mean, I can only imagine that uh, you, uh, you and Jack and Ryan are spending a lot of this time thinking about, you know, the, the next part of your journey, right, yeah. as a band. And, and usually you're doing that while you're on tour and while you're doing uh, radio spots and while you're kind of running around and doing a lot of things. And there's still a lot of running around and doing a lot of things in quarantine, but this is probably the most concentrated time you've had together, you know, without, without touring like crazy in a long time. Is that true? It is. It is. And it's been an incredible time of reflection and focus to really feel out from each other and from the world and our fans where the next direction for our music will be, where the next direction for our touring, everything that's part of this business, the merchandise, how we're supporting, you know, philanthropic organizations and the, the organizations that make sense for us to support. Um, so it's been a lot of self-reflection and I think it's going to result in art, like you said, that not necessarily was more meaningful, but meaningful in a different way because we've had this time. Yeah. I think the whole point is always to be making art that feels like it's speaking to the present moment, what people are thinking and feeling right now. I think that's what really gets to us. Um, so that's, that's the whole point. <laughs> I, uh, I have one last question for you and I'm gonna put you on the spot. Uh-oh. Yesterday, you decided to start a TikTok and you made your first TikTok. Why did you decide to do that? I mean, <laughs> okay, so I scroll through TikTok like any, like, you know, relative millennial does. Um, and some of it is really kind of brilliant. But there was one sounds clip that is really just like, kind of like a percussive role doubling on itself. It starts like, uh, like uh, quarter notes, one, two, three, four, then eighth notes, 16th notes, and then 32nd notes. And I just said, I know. Wait, can I hear those list. 16th notes again? <laughs> I don't uh, know it's anyway. awesome um, and I realized exactly what I need to do with this and I have a very bizarre talent that no one asked for where I can bounce my chest muscles uh independently of each other and in rhythm and so I did that um and no one cares about it but I just I just had to do it um okay everyone are you watching not on right TikTok? now are you not on TikTok is like a, oh yeah yeah we're on TikTok we're oh, on okay, TikTok okay, but I was okay. curious why you thought that now would be a, a good time to go on TikTok. And not negatively or positively, but everyone who's watching now, go look at Caleb's Instagram story. And he posted his TikTok on the Instagram story. And how, really how dare you? How <laughs> dare you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But this conversation has helped me really to think through a few things about live performance. And I think it's going to influence how we move forward as a band, how I move forward as an individual working on things. Um, and yeah, thank you for taking the time today and talk. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for tuning in, people of the world. Awesome. Thank you, people of the world. Um, I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Bye-bye. <laughs>